Hi everyone, it's Maggie Davis, and today I am happy to be joined by two of Kentucky's finest. They're the BBN's favorite couple, I'm sure, and two of the most dominant athletes from UK's campus last season. It's Nick Richards and Leah Edmond. Thank you both so much for being here with me today and jumping on this Zoom call. No problem. First things first, how are you all doing? How have you been handling quarantine and how are you staying busy? Um, well, we just finished school, so that's been what's keeping me busy the past couple of weeks. And now I'm just trying to find something to do. I have a dog, so she's been taking up most of my time just trying to keep myself busy because I'm not really going home because I don't want to spread anything to my parents just in case I've been staying by myself. Right. Nick? For me, I've been trying to get as much time in the gym as possible. Just trying to, you know, jog around, play with my dog as much as possible. I've been hanging out with Leah's parents, but not not as much, you know, just trying to keep our distance away from them. But other than that, just trying to stay, trying to be as busy as possible. Definitely, I think that's what we're all trying to do. <laughs> and actually, I don't think I've ever heard the story about how you all started actually dating. How did you all meet? Um, we met at a party. Was it love at first sight? No. Something like that. <laughs> I did not like him when I first Why not? Because he tried that, but he was too cool. And okay. I've already been here for long enough, and I've been around enough basketball players to not be phased by the thinking they're too cool thing. So I was just like, oh, that's not – you already came in here thinking that you are everything and more, and I didn't like that. But it kind of worked out. It worked out. <laughs> dog is trying to escape from the apartment if you hear her in the background she keeps hitting the door so if she leaves there she is <laughs> i think we're all just getting used to this work from home zooming all the time kind of lifestyles no worries no worries okay i want to rewind to about two months ago when all of this really started coronavirus when it became real to a lot of people we saw it happen pretty quickly we saw the nba get shut down and the sec tournament and then finally march madness Nick, what was that time period like for you as a player who was on a team that seemed ready to make a pretty good run in the postseason? Honestly, I can remember the day that we heard everything happening. We were on the basketball court warming, like practicing, getting ready for the SEC tournament. And then Cal stops us in the middle of the practice and says, they just canceled our tournament. And we were all, we were all really sad, like, because we were actually ready. We were all hyped just to play. So then two hours later, we're on the bus. We're heading back to Lexington, and we're all sleeping, and Cal wakes us all up, saying our season's over. And honestly, that probably was like one of the saddest moments in my basketball career. Um, but we all, we all, it was all good. We all saw the brightest side of it. You know, we, we came together as a team later on in the season. We got really close with each other. So I think that we go just, we're happy about that part. And Coach Cal has talked a lot about that day too, especially that pickup game you all played. When you all sort of, I guess, realized that that was the last time you'd be playing together as a team, what was yeah. that game like for you? It was probably one of the most intense games we've ever played because we know that it probably would be the last time we ever saw each other. You know, most of the guys the next, the next day, they went home to see their families. Um, I stayed here because New York is probably one of the most dangerous cities in America to go to right now. It's not really safe to go there. Um, but other than that, honestly, you know, it's probably one of the, the best pickup games I've ever played with that group. You know, guys, everybody was making shots. Everybody was competing, um, playing hard. It was just a really fun basketball game. And when you decided to declare for the NBA draft a little bit after that sometime in April, there still wasn't a lot of clarity in terms of what the draft or the combine or even next season's NBA is going to look like, how did you make that decision to declare? And did you ever consider coming back or did you know this was your chance? Honestly, I didn't even make the decision. My coaches made it for me. They all told me to, I think it's time for, I think it's time for you to go. I think, it, you know, I think you're ready for the NBA. Right, right. And obviously that I'm sure was a tough decision. But after your freshman season, did you ever think that you would be in this position? I mean, you ended up here as clearly one of the fan favorites someone who is in contention for the SEC Player of the Year, and now someone preparing for the NBA draft. Did you always have that faith in yourself? This is how it was going to work out? I always knew it was, I always knew it was going to work out eventually, even though, you know, I had my ups and downs my first two years here. 
But, you know, my coaches are stuck, they're stuck with me, new teammates that I got every single year. And, you know, they always push me to be the best player that I could be. So. Right, and Leah stuck with you too, I guess. Leah, <laughs> how was it for you to watch and I'm assuming even sort of help him grow and develop that confidence in himself? Um, it was hard because you can only say but so much to someone before they have to start believing it themselves and she's throwing an absolute fit. And we apologize, but this you are totally fine. She doesn't get enough attention to throw on a fit. So, but I think it's just kind of hard because like you can say as much as you want to, but like until he believes it himself, then it's not really gonna help. So just being encouraging and trying not to be as negative and just keeping positive like when a game didn't go the right way staying positive and trying to keep his head away from basketball sometimes was the best thing that I could do right and you obviously had plenty of reasons to be confident yourself for a time all-american with the volleyball team you hold multiple school records just named Miss Wildcat for the year and a recent graduate from UK with a degree in elementary education congrats on that of course what is next for you and has coronavirus affected your plans at all um, a little bit because it's kind of unknown for both sides of my career. If I want to teach, we kind of don't even know if we're going to have school in the fall. So that's hard. And then for volleyball, I really don't have any options in America. I have to go overseas. And so determining whether I want to stay or go is really hard and not ma making sure I'm not putting myself in a position that if this did happen again, it'd be really hard for me to get home. So it's been a lot. I've had, I have some time to really make a final decision, but I'm definitely weighing all my options right now just in case something might happen. So when this does sort of, you know, calm down, I guess, and things return to normal, is overseas still an option for you or are you hoping to stay around here and teach first? I don't know, actually. Coronavirus has kind of bought a new perspective to my life about volleyball and what I will accomplish and things. So I'm not sure yet. Right. Well, it's a tough decision, of course. And you've certainly left your mark on the UK volleyball program and you've left it in good hands. Craig Skinner and some of the up and coming talent seem like they're ready to roll with a new season. It was recently announced the team has the number one recruiting class in the country for next year. What does it mean to you that you played such a significant role in the growth of that program on a national level? It was really cool, like, when I saw the tweet that it happened, because I, like, ran up to Nick, and I was like, we have number one team in the country. Like, I was just so excited, because, like, that's something that we've been working for. I mean, my class coming in, we were pretty high, and we thought that was the greatest thing ever, and so just seeing the progress that they've made in four years and being able to get that high level of recruits and knowing that you're not really losing anything when you lose seniors, like, you're just gaining even more incredible people, and so I think as seniors, it was really nice to see that, like, us leaving won't leave that much of a mark. We'll be getting the same great players that we've had for such a long time. Definitely. Well, only up from here. I know you have always said that one of the goals for the program is to make a Final Four. Is that something you're going to be rooting on for them in the next year? Oh, for sure. Because when they go to Final Four, it's like everybody goes to the Final Four, not just the alum, not just them, it's the alumni too. And so I know we'll all be really excited to finally see them get there because we've been so close so many times. Leah, you went to high school right here in Lexington. Nick, You've been here for three years now. Now that you're both potentially, hopefully, maybe after all of this, going to leave Lexington, what are you going to miss most about this city? Yeah, I'll start with you. Put you uh, on the spot. <laughs> I think I just, it's been such like a community atmosphere for me, especially moving here. It was kind of like, at a really hard time in my life in the middle of high school. And so coming here and just finding truly a home and loving every part of Lexington. Like it's just such a cool place to live. It's just a good mix of a college town and somewhere where you can raise a family. And it's also so close to so many other things. So I got to go to a lot of cities I've never been to. And I just really love it here. The people are great and the people surrounding Kentucky are amazing. And I just can't believe I have to leave them now because <laughs> I really don't want to. Definitely. For me, I probably say the one thing that I miss is fans um you know there are some crazy fans out there they're also like some really nice fans you know they're the ones that come up to you and just say hi to you and you have a conversation with them um another thing that i miss is playing in rough arena you know it's one of the greatest arenas in the country one of the most has the most tradition at playing basketball um and you know the fans this year they really showed us how loud they could get in that local game and in that and last year when, when we played Kansas here, you know, it was pretty fun. All right, you bring up the Louisville game. That was obviously a huge game. And I kind of viewed it as almost like a, a turning point in your career here. How much did you love those rivalry games? Oh, they were, they were the best thing ever. Uh, I've never been in such a 
going playing here at Anthem and losing, you know, the atmosphere is just crazy. Definitely. And I, I brought up at the beginning of this interview that I think you all are one of the BBN's favorite couples. I think that's, you know, fair to say. What's it like being in such a public relationship, especially here in Lexington, where the people are, like you said, Nick, crazy sometimes, especially about college sports? Honestly, I just, we just try to keep it as low-key as possible. You know, we go out, um, try to go to movies. We try to make sure that we're sitting in one part of the movie theater where no one, where no one can bother us. Uh, when we go out, when we go out to eat dinner at our favorite places, you know, if fans come up to us and try to say hi to us, we will talk to them and, you know, just have a, have a conversation. We just try to be nice as possible to them. It seemed like you kind of had fun with it on social media at one point. Even Jay Billis got involved. Was it ever hard or even just a little bit weird, though, to have interactions like that? For me, it was weird. It was really weird because that at some points it was kind of like I wasn't getting noticed for volleyball. I was getting noticed because I was Nick Richards' girlfriend. I was just kind of like, well, that's weird. But ever since kind of like going like this past year, it's been more like, hey, we watched you play. And that was really cool to see the transition of like, I'm just his girlfriend to like, hey, you play volleyball too. And your team's really good too. So for me, I think it was more weird than him because he's used to being in a spotlight and I wasn't used to being in a spotlight for something other than volleyball. Right. That totally makes sense. And you obviously had an amazing career yourself. So you're like, hey, no, I'm, I'm not just his girlfriend. I'm Leah Edmond. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right. So one final question. It's a tough one. I know you all have debated this a lot. And I need you to be honest with me, all right? Who is the better athlete, Leah or Nick? Me. <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm the better athlete. If we're going in terms of just sport, I'm the better athlete. But if we're going off of pure athletic ability, he's definitely better than me. He jumps <laughs> higher than me. He's definitely quicker than me. But I think I'm better at volleyball than he is basketball. Than <laughs> Nick? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Well, thanks for being a good sport. And you both had excellent careers during your time at Kentucky. I wish you both nothing but the best going forward, of course. Thanks again for coming on to talk today. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the Big Blue Nation? How do you want them to remember you? Uh, thanks a lot, BBN. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the support and continue supporting our women's sports as well. Definitely. Thank you for that shout out, Leah. We love it. Thanks again for coming on to talk today. Good to catch up with you both. You too.